Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Thanks for tuning in to Art on the Creek. I'm so happy that you're here with me in my home studio in Parker, Colorado. It is Sunday, which means it's time for a review. Um, I'm actually filming this on Friday, August 11th, because even though this is going to air in a couple weeks, um, when you're watching this, past me has been summoned for jury duty. So uh, Sunday night, so today's Friday, Sunday night, I need to call to see if my number will be required to attend the, the proceedings. Um, so I'm very happy to go, but this particular week is pretty inconvenient for me. Um, I know that sounds a little bit selfish, but I need to take my daughter off to college. So, and our car situation is, would make that a Herculean effort if I were in fact summoned. So hopefully uh, I won't have to juggle too much, uh, but if I do get called to serve, I'm happy to do it. So that's my little personal situation right now. Uh, I'm very excited for my daughter to go back to college. She is too. So that's kind of a, a little landmark in our lives. But today let's talk about watercolor. <laughs> what I want to review today is the Graphitint watercolor pencils. I have reviewed the pans on this channel, but today I want to talk about the pencils. So let's get to it. Let's see what we can do. And uh, let's compare these to the pans and see if we like them. Are you ready? Here we go. Well, here we are. Um, I'm trying to use up this paper. I, I don't really recommend it. I'm sorry. It's just, uh, it's 25% cotton, but whenever I work with it, the pigment will just kind of sit on top of it. So not my favorite, but I do like the hot press for ink and for colored pencil. Um, so these are kind of like colored pencils in that way. So I kind of wanted to try it on here just to give this paper yet another chance and see what I think. Uh, before we get into the Graphitint pencils, I just want to show you the pans. I'm not going to um, really work with them too much today. I can swatch them out on here for a comparison. In fact, I think I will. But the review for these, I'll put a little card up here in the corner in case you're interested and want to hop over there and see that one first. Although, of course, you don't have to watch these in any particular order. Um, the Graphitint pans come packaged in this way with uh, this little guy comes out. So they're kind of in these sets and I believe you can buy these pans individually. Well, that just came right out, but uh, the pan itself comes out too. Yes. The pan itself comes out and you can get uh, another one or put a different paint in there. These are kind of a unique size um, and they have this little lip on the end. So the pans are kind of uh, proprietary to this style of set. But I'm betting that if you had any other Derwent pan sets, you could interchange the pans accordingly. So they seem to be, at least I have the tinted charcoal and the graviton and the pans kind of seem to be the same configuration. They come with a water brush and a little vellum sheet for, um, for your swatch reference. So let's hold off on this for just one second though and let's jump over to the graviton pencils. Now the first thing that you'll notice is that there are 24 of these and only 12 of these. Um, which is why I wanted to get the graviton pencils because you have a broader spectrum to work with. Um, I love Derwent products. I like how they're packaged. I like everything about them. And um, I really like that the leads are thicker too, because when you're working with a normal colored pencil or a, a traditional colored pencil, I should say, the leads tend to be 3.8 millimeters in diameter. And these are gonna be bigger. Um, they're usually around five. Let me see if I can find an exact measurement on that for you. Just get the plastic wrap off of here. I will link to these in the description so that you can have a quick, easy path to purchase. And uh, full disclosure, my links are now affiliate links with uh, with Amazon. So um, if I get affiliate links from anywhere else, it will be noted in the description. Um, so here's how they come packaged. Nice range of colors. I like the grays in particular. And then you have um, you have a red, some browns, some a nice greens segueing into blue greens, and then finally the purples. So these would be great for landscapes, things like that. I'm thinking, but there's no reason you couldn't do animals or anything like that. Uh, let me put the lid back on this so I can turn it over without losing all my pencils. And let's just uh, read a little bit about them. You can use them dry like a colored pencil, and then blend with water. 
and that will give you a more intense uh, intensive color and it will also bring up that graphite uh, sparkles not the right word but a little bit of a sheen you'll see when we do it so these are uh, very well made there's more information on them about the Derwent art uh, excuse me about them on Derwent art and um, when I do the voiceover I will uh, talk more about them about how they're made and their light fastness and all of that kind of thing but first of all let's swatch out the pans just so that we can have a memory now that I'm doing the voiceover and um, I am remembering what all of these products are like to use I definitely prefer the pans the most of all of these I mean look at that pigment that lays down it really is fabulous and you can see that last bit on the bottom right where it leaves a dot right where I pick my brush up that's how the pigment just kind of sits on this paper so it's not my favorite paper the paper will work fine just for us today here but when you're using these at home I really recommend using a more textured paper because that way the separation properties of this will really be able to show up just like in a multi-pigment watercolor I want to show you something that happens uh, with this graphite I'm going to do a little smudge test I'll slow this down to normal speed right here I hope you can see on camera the little bit of sheen that's in all of those swatches that's a normal property of graphite so when you do uh, that smudge test here's what I'm doing that with my finger here you can see how the graphite just comes right up on your fingers so good to know if you want to use these or the pencils you might want to consider using a fixative after you finish your work or um, use it to your advantage use it as one of the assets to to this uh, to this medium and use it to help you in getting some nice shading and shadowing going you could use a blending stump as well if you didn't want to have graphite on your fingers but now without further fall to all let's go on and we will swatch out the pencils I will list the individual color names and numbers in the description here um, for you but what I want to do right now is just kind of try and keep this uh, a uniform as test as possible so what I'm doing right now is I'm measuring that core it works out to be very very close to five millimeters in diameter whereas a comparison pencil I had there was about 3.8 so it is a more substantial lead I like that about Derwent I just think that that's a good thing that they do um, I might have a little heavier hand than some artists but I have found that it it suits me well I like Derwent I've, I have yet to find something of theirs that I'm not a, a fan of and can't see myself using at some point now all of these you can mix with another medium they're just a, a water-based media but just remember they will have that graphite property in fact you can see as this is swatching down when I put more layers on the left side of the swatch it almost just looks black and that's very interesting because that graphite just kind of builds up in the layers and you lose the color of your uh, swatch just a little bit now you'll see when we blend it with water uh, on this paper I was surprised because it almost completely blends out and that's kind of unusual if you're not using the right kind of paper one thing that I think is important to note on this paper since it is so smooth that the graphite property of this and separation really does show up and I think the more subtle the texture in your paper the more subtle that graphite is going to be we'll do a little test on cotton paper as well but first let's take a look at this white pencil here I wanted to know what exactly this would do with graphite and it it's very hard to see on camera I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick this up but what it does is it leaves kind of a you know what it looks like if you were trying to paint your wall and you didn't quite get the whites to match so there you can really see the graphite uh, show up and I hope you can see that sheen just a little bit the sheen is on all of the swatch but it's really prominent where I have more layers so back to that white um, yeah it's it's just like you were trying to match the paint and it's just off a little bit so it's an extremely subtle shading but it does have that graphite in it just like all the others so let me speed up the blending here and you'll be able to see how these look in comparison to the pans the first thing that really jumped out at me was how much more pale they are even though it goes down a little bit more sheer I can tell that this is still very very good pigment the pigment quality is rich it's consistent there is no streaking and like I said again this is not my favorite paper um, so I am kind of giving it a double hurdle to come over there and I'm finding out that these are really blending quite well I'm using a uh, Princeton Neptune brush and I just want to test that white again up there on just plain white to see um, what it looks like and it is does look like that mismatched paint if you will and then I'm switching to a Taclon brush because sometimes when you're blending with colored pencil sometimes a, a firmer bristle helps you just a little bit 
And along the top there, there were some one-to-one -one correspondences with the pencils and the pans, and the colors match exactly. You can see right along the bottom here how some of them really don't blend out all the way, and that's something you want to keep in mind for uh, whenever you're using these in your artwork, because you can definitely use that to your advantage. Um, let's talk about light fastness. I just want to say parenthetically that I've got some major construction going on next door to me, and it's just been going on for a long time, and I can't... Uh, I can't seem to block out the sound all the way, so I'm really sorry if there's some background noise. Derwent is a very reliable company, and these are uh, no exception. They're rated on the blue wool scale. I have a link in the description to the color chart for all the Graviton products, and you can see their ratings down there, just for your convenience. So I think you can pretty much use these uh, with confidence for professional work or for just using in your sketchbook. All of the pigments, all of these colors can be blended. They can be used dry and they can then be blended. They can be blended with one another. So let's have a little bit of fun with that here. Let me show you what it's like on cotton watercolor paper. The journal is uh, Arch's cold press, so I'm gonna have a lot more texture to deal with. But I wanna show you what it's like when you're using these on a textured paper because sometimes Watercolor pencils or any kind of water soluble uh, pencil form or, or a pigment stick, they don't blend, they don't dissolve completely. And that's huge for me. Sometimes that's a deal breaker and it really is hard for me to use a product that if I'm going to use it to fill in like this and then blend it with a wet brush, I want to be able to have those pigment lines, those initial pigment lines just disappear. And I do want to put some of this white down here because I'm still kind of curious about that one. I, I want to blend it first, but unfortunately my uh, brush is just a little bit uh, got some of the old uh, color on it there. Sorry about that. So it has a slight pink tone to it, but really what it is is it's kind of just a, a flat white. Um, those of you that remember <laughs> the 1970s, interior paint in uh, much of the suburbs in the United States was eggshell white, and that is pretty much the color that this is. It's just a very kind of a dusty looking white. Um, going ahead and blending these out though, I'm really liking it. I mean, you know, you're getting some good blends and uh, while I'm talking about it here, I just want to pick up this sketchbook again so that I can have a reference. It almost completely blends out and notice how sheer it is though. They said that the, the in the description on the website, it, it says that the color is a lot more intense after it's blended with water. I actually think it's the opposite. I think that the color gets softer after it's blended with water. And um, I don't know, maybe it's the way I'm using it, but let's try putting something down here with a heavy hand and seeing how well that blends. Because a lot of times that's the that's the problem when you try and, uh, and blend and you don't get your pigment lines up uh, all the way is that whatever pigment you're using, maybe you've used too heavy of a hand. Um, at least I've certainly found that to be true for myself. And I am impressed, you guys. Look at that. It almost completely blends. I mean, there is a faint square in there, but it's not a lot. It's just not. And, you know, if you're looking really closely, you can see the lines from the first three swatches I did. But none of that is a deal breaker. It's all fine. It's all good. So let me go ahead and we'll go over this white. I want to try something. I'm going to do right here in this spot, there's nothing underneath this. I'm just, I think this is the indigo. I'm just adding a, a whole swatch of indigo here on a blank side of the paper, that's right. And then now I wanna take that white and go over it. And I just wanna see what happens when it blends on paper because I have a feeling, a very slight feeling let's see if I'm right, that we can almost mix a pastel version of these. And the reason that I'm hedging my bets on this is because the pigment's so pale anyway, it really is almost pastel when you blend it with these pigments. But you know what? I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but as I'm looking very closely at this when I'm blending it, the, the liquid pools that are coming up around the brush do look as if I, for example, if I had taken indigo and added just a little bit of Chinese white to it, that's kind of what's happening here. So it does look a little bit more like it's slightly opaque, but you know, when it's all dry, you really can't tell at all. So I would be, I would, I'm going to guess that that white pencil might be best used on black paper. And I'm sorry, I don't have any black paper right now to show you what that would be like. Oh, let me cut in here because I could certainly show you on a piece of that Arches journal cover. Don't you love it when you get an idea when you're doing something else? <laughs> Let's see if I've still got the white one out. I don't think I do. I've kind of, I have cleaned up here, which is also the story of my life. Here we go. Here's the white. And let's just do a little bit. Now this is just the 
the journal cover here. I think it's just the, it's like an inside kind of a extra back so that you can have support when you're using this, but it's not that opaque of a white, but it does go on really nicely. Let's just try doing some hash lines. Things like that. Using this is a tack line. You can use any brush at all. But let's try blending this. All right, I can see where this would be good in maybe clouds or a ghost image, any kind of a sheer white fabric that you wanted to paint, anything like that. Uh, we can get all those lines to go away, that's for sure. But let's see if it really stays on. I'm not sure that it's going to. Let me try dipping the pencil in water and seeing what that does. Not a lot. Now, I don't know this particular paper here, right? It could be the paper. I mean, this particular paper really is nothing to write home about. It's just the inside uh, backing of the journal. But just to see, let me go ahead and dry this with a heat tool and then we can see what this white pencil does because obviously using a white pencil on white paper is not going to give it a fair shot. Dry enough. What do you think? Worth it? I think so in the right applications. I think it could be kind of nice. Um, maybe in a, a dandelion that's gone to seed. Oh, I don't know, anything soft and white and fluffy. I think that there, you'd find a use for that pencil, sure. In fact, mixing these, mixing the white with the other pigments rather is going to be really a game changer for you on a lot of levels because I've already got a fairly significant amount of the white down on the paper here. Now I'm not saying to mix it on the paper, you could definitely do this in a palette, um, but putting that autumn brown over it, you can get a nice shade that could be used for complexions. And of course you can mix and blend all of these in a palette and I'll kind of show you how to do that when we get to the painting. Um, but look how nice and sheer that is. That, that's a really good uh, reddish highlight for, uh, for complexions. And then if we go in here with just this straight autumn brown, you'll see how significantly more uh, intensity is like a rust. So toning the other pencils down is a really good idea to do with that white pencil. So far, just with the swatch tests, I can see a really wide range of possibilities for these. And if you already have the Graphitent paint pans, then I think these pencils will really help augment what you've already got going. So now for our little test drawing, using the same paper, um, just because I have it out, I'm still not happy with it, you guys. <laughs> but that's okay. I found the cutest little picture on Pixabay of a frog that was sitting under a leaf, but on yet another leaf. So I'm just drawing this as I would with colored pencil and then going in to blend it with water. And as you would blend colored pencil with uh, any other kind of uh, uh, odorless mineral spirits or anything like that, this time you're just using water. And with that graphite effect, it really is kind of cool. Now here is how I would uh, use the pencil in a palette to blend. You just put the tip of the pencil down on a ceramic plate and then take a wet brush and just kind of agitate it. And you could pull that pigment off and then just use it like watercolor. So that really does make it really diverse, fun, easy to use, lots of really neat things you can do to play with this one. Um, I'm having fun with it. The only thing that I'm not crazy about is that everything is kind of the same value. So that's something that often happens whenever you use curated sets. And the first thing I said was how much I love this muted palette, which I do, um, but nothing jumps out, nothing stands out. So I think that if you're going to use this set, um, you're gonna have to go back in and add some lines here like I'm doing on the frog like this, or you would have to use it in conjunction with something else to really make whatever it is that you're working on pop. But for this right now, for this purpose, I really just wanted to, um, to create a little frog drawing for you so that you could see how these things work when they're in use and only using this product. And now here you can see, at least I'm trying to catch the light so that you can see, uh, there it is, a little bit of the sheen from the graphite. So you will have that, you'll be able to see the color behind it with the sheen of the graphite on top. And that's kind of a neat effect. If that's something you're looking for to augment something you're working on, I think these pencils could be a whole lot of fun.
And, you know, even though this uh, frog could be considered uh, something out of nature, I really feel that's where the palette lends. Um, I wanted to try something different, and this is just not a good drawing of Sully, so I apologize. But since this one had already gone off the rails, I decided I would go ahead and outline it. You know, sometimes when you've got a drawing that is much less than you expected, if you put an outline on it, sometimes it really is okay. <laughs> so I'll show you this one at the end too, but I just wanted to show you that you can play with a lot of different uh, types of art with these Gravitant pencils. In these final shots here, you can see the close-up of Sully's hand. I love all the texture. The graphite really does lend a nice touch. Um, of course, it's a little scary <laughs> version of Sully, but that's okay. As we say in the biz, you can't win them all. And I'm not uh, shy to show you guys <laughs> what I consider to be my failures. Um, I really like this one, though, how the texture in that graphite just gave that frog so much personality. And here it is, the full picture. And you can kind of see by outlining it, by adding those darker shadows, you can pull it away from the background. And it's just, it's very subtle. But I think if you use these together, you can really create some unique, wonderful paintings. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you next time. Bye now.